Yep, well, we're going to find out if we see picks and bans jumping in right now. What would you change? Team Elevate have first ban, first pick. What would you focus on? How can you focus when everything was horrible? We saw, well, it was all about Matt Kois and Cloud together, right? The Athena dash taunt into the Zeus guaranteed damage. It was just too much, realistically, for Elevate to handle. They had the on her middle with Zeus no jungle, but they never had any pressure with it at all. They were just being the defensive side of the whole time. I mean, they lost a lot of footing there, too. So first ban going to be Zeus. No surprise there. Lots of damage. And uh, I mean, that's really, that's the first thing you think about when you when you hear Zeus, is all the damage that he brings to the table. All the team fight presence that he has in those jungle control fights with his ultimate makes it so difficult to position yourselves aggressively. He can just drop it on himself and the team doesn't want to engage onto that. They don't want to take all that Zeus poke for no reason. They also don't want to take any Nemesis poke coming out from Most Wanted, but Guan Yu going to be banned out yet again. Elevate. Don't want to make any mistakes here. And Fafnir. That leaves Raijin open. That leaves Ao Kuang open is the biggest one there. We haven't seen Ao Kuang in quite a while, and he's going to be the first slot. I like that decision by Elevate. We'll see if they can transition this into the late game, though, because Ao Kuang does struggle a little bit early on. And knowing Most Wanted, they're not afraid to be aggressive right off the bat. First pick, Soul. What's that about? I would say this is a flex pick for Most Wanted, where you're not giving up too much information. You're saying that, okay, we have Soul. You don't know if that's going to be mid or in the Hunter right now. We're going to pick up our next pick, and you're going to have to respond to us. You're going to be able to flex around whatever Elevate picks up, and then at that point, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's just one of those things you're not, you don't really expect, but Athena pick, once again, did a lot of good work coming out last game. I like this Capri pick from Elevate because this allows the Ao Kuang to really dive in that back line, look for some picks, try to find that execute, and if he doesn't find it, he's expecting to get bailed out by that Capri ultimate. I mean, and it's definitely nice. If you can get those clutch Kepri saves, that can change the tide of a team fight almost immediately. But Neath going to get locked in for Elevate. I'd, I'd say another I'd say another flex pick. We see a lot more Neath in the mid now, but she can still go ADC. I say that the most we see Neath is when there's an Ao Kuang on the, their own team. You're trying to get that World Weaver on that primary target just to get them a little bit lower for that execute. Raven locked in for most wanted. Once again, going to be able to go toe to toe with the best of them. One of the best bruisers in the game, in my opinion, but going to ban out Raijin. Trying to eliminate some of the mid options, but it could be Neath mid for Elevate as well. So it's a little bit of a gamble with that Raijin ban, I would say. Rada Tosker banned out as well from Team Elevate, but going to get rid of the Freya is most wanted. I mean, Freya can, has a lot of potential. We didn't really get to see it, but she has a lot of it. It was all about Most Wanted shutting down the Freya. So much pressure onto, from like we mentioned, the global presence between the Athena and Ratatasker. Forced out the defensive abilities, forced out the Valkyrie's discretion defensively, and the purification was always having to be used. Didn't allow any breathing room for this Freya the last game. I think I think the last ban of Susano is a very good pickup. We saw him not only just pump out so much cataclysmic damage, but also just the pulls, the CC being so freaking slippery. But most want are going to be picking up Naja for the jungle. It's going to be the Naja paired up with the Athena. The goal is to have Matt Coy's do Matt Coy's things, finding the purification yeah. burns, and then immediately Sinister is going to be looking for that target without the purification, trying to get them into the sky. Man, um, I mean, it's going to be a magical ADC no matter what, picking up the Kronos for Most Wanted as well. So Solar Kronos is going to be able to really flex out. We're going to have to wait and see there, but Elevate finishing up with an Odin and a Jingwei. I like this pickup from Most Wanted all across the board because they have some nice tower shredders between Kronos, Soul, and even Naja with a steroid burst, burst coming from him. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a real objective fight there too. Objective shredders from most one. I want to be able to take this very quick and very clean, like the last game. Elevate though, they're gonna have to respond to the early game pressure because we know Robin and Naja how much pressure they can apply in between levels one and three. And I'm expecting most wanted to maybe look a play in the jungle side of things. Nickwood and in my Zen doing a little bit of a rotating, throwing down a ward at that speed camp. A little bit of a fight here comes the bird bomb onto wolves, but Sinus are looking very low. We're not even into the game yet, and it's still that might be the first but good route onto wolves so much damage coming out stellar burst and jumper gonna find it wolves gonna be f wolves is gonna fall and elevate gonna get first blood immediately that's a great first blood for jumper nonetheless it's an ao kuang on the receiving end of that first blood gonna be able to finish off the items unfortunately most wanted they didn't respect the potential of the double root combination from keegs and ripping holes and that's going to hurt Sinister because you're relying on some momentum and now Al Kwong with first blood. I mean, 
feed the dragon. The dragon is absolutely terrifying. Just keep feeding him. And that's an assist for everybody else because they were all there. So really beefing up the team. Really good start for Elevate. But the rest kind of calm down, going back to their respective spots. Going to start this off like a normal game now. It's going to be trying to start off as a normal game, but it's going to be Sinusure without the purification. So once there's going to be some of these little 2v2 skirmishes, if Keeksmate can find that route onto Sinusure, that could be another kill. I mean, that's that's a lot of pressure against most wanted and we have we didn't really get to see a lot of that last game but elevate have a really nice upper hand here right now i would say so especially in the dual lane jing wei and this kepri have a lot of lane presence with their clear and now matt coys he is very low he has to back and is that's gonna allow at least the chronos to get some solo farm though a little bit of solo farm yeah but ripping holes and in my zen could could use this to their advantage really bring some pressure but sinus are gonna find the universe ring toss and and the wrap, but not going to be able to find Keeks. But that's a lot of pressure coming out from Most Wanted, which is what we really want to see them step up. Great rotation from Wolves, making it a three on two in their favor. There could have been a turnaround potential onto Sinusure just to find the route, but with Wolves right around the corner, you don't want to be necessarily doing that. Not just yet. Nick would able to really clear out these very quickly with the bird bomb. No worries there going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Robin. But the pressure, Elevate are not letting up because Transonics was the only one here. Koi's had to back. A little bit of extra farm for him, but for the most part, not looking good. Sinus are trying to get aggressive, but he's very low. Going to have to force out the backflip, but he may... Yep, Sinus are going to going to regret that. Jumpa doing a great job finding another Whoa. kill for himself. More momentum for this jungle Al Kuang on the magical side of things. Getting into his item builds right now. He's going to be able to get that physical defense online. And without the purification from Sinusure, that was a very risky play, trying to find the Sash aggressively. I mean, he was too low for that and instead it ended up biting him in the butt because he shouldn't have been that aggressive. I mean, yeah, it was a 2v2, but the numbers didn't necessarily match up for them. And now Elevate are sitting two kills happier. And that was a basically a missed route from Keeg's mate. Even if that connected, he would have fallen that much quicker. It took the last two abilities from Jumpa just to find the kill. So what does that mean? What does that mean for, I mean, R Ravana gonna do just fine farming back up. But what does that mean for Naja? Well, without the purification on to, oh, I'm sorry, without uh, the strugglings from the Naja currently against this Al Kuang, he has to look for other plays. He cannot directly fight into Jumpa any longer. He has to be looking maybe at the soul lane at this point. There's going to be a lot of boxing between Wolves and Niquid, and that can allow Sinusher to get back into the game. If you find a kill onto Niquid, maybe you can invade Speed of Blue as a result. Chunking a little bit of Wolves' health here. I didn't realize that much damage would be pumped out by Odin at level 5, but color me surprised. Going to be a little bit more pressure on the side of Most Wanted for Wolves. It's going to be the Fire Giant Elementals, though, for Most Wanted. Still getting themselves a little bit of gold, and this is what I was talking about, where comes. if Sinister waits for Niquid to find the jump, which is what exactly is going to happen. Waiting for it. Not going to pop the jump. Instead, just going to let the shield pop, but the ultimate going to be able to lock down a lot of health as soon as he comes down. He's got the rest of the team there. The Mystic Rush going to be able to find it, and Wolves going to find the kill, but now Jumpa jumping in, and that's not good for Sinusure. No, not at all, but Jumpa is fine, though. He doesn't. <laughs> he gets away under the Tier 1 tower. This is where the buffs are respawning right now. Speed and Blue are up, but without the Naja and the Robin ultimate, you don't want to overextend, especially having to worry about Keeg's mate ultimate. So playing it safe, grabbing their own speed buff and slowly getting back into the game. Only four, 350 gold behind Jumpa. I was a little scared in that team fight, was worried for most wanted. I mean, that could have went really bad, but they kept the distance they kept the distance between each other, and the Odin the Odin wall was there, so no big deal. They're going to have a nice route coming out from Neath, but Klau still in the disapparate, and it's going to force him out, going to be able to take those right mid harpies for himself. Elevate grabbing those for themselves. Lefts are respawning momentarily. Trans I'm sorry, Zen grabbing his own boars while the rest of the left side is going to get farmed out by Transonics. Zen going to have to head back soon. Zen has absolutely no mana. He's got the red buff. Going to be able to clear out some of these creep, but he's going to have to worry about a gank coming out soon. And that's going to give some flexibility for for Transonics to rotate. He's going to grab his own back left Harpies, trying to get to level 9. Root not on the mark, but it is from the Capri. It's going to force out the Purification from Cloud. Purification and Disapparate once again, finding Solace in that Tier 1 tower. 
The right hand side, both of these soul are still very contempt about boxing each other out. Niquid looking for maybe a jump here, only detonating onto those two melee minions, and he's going to lose some gold under tower there. Just a little bit. Probably should have stepped up a little bit, but he's, I think he's afraid of wolves at this point. Robin pumps out a lot of damage, has a very good boxing potential, and even though Odin's pretty tanky, you don't want to lose this fight. He didn't want to jump because of another gank attempt, possibly, mm -hmm. from Steinishore around the corner. We saw what happened the last time around, and that could be something that most wanted are going to continue to lean on. Sinusure looking for a potential play, though. It's Matt Coys that should be setting him up, though. Rip and Hole is going to be able to pull him back, force out that purification as well. Don't want to get caught between three members of Elevate. That'd be bad news, considering they have a little bit of a lead. It seemed that Sinusure was waiting for Matt Coys to go in. Stun, not on the mark. Not going to be able to go inside that Odin cage. So trading ult for ult. Going to favor out Nickwood a little bit, because that timer is a lot shorter than Wolves' ultimate. Exactly. Going to be able to save himself at that point back. Good zone zoning coming out from that cage. You don't have to use the cage just offensively. You can use it as a zoning tool. Keep people away or keep people away from you. And that's the beauty thing about Naja, though. You can go through that cage if you can find the sash stun, mm -hmm. transporting your character to the opposite end. And that's what he's going to be relying on if he gets trapped in that cage. But if it's in that tower like it was earlier, that could spell really bad news, especially early on. Those tower shots are going to be pumping out a lot of damage, and we're only about six minutes into the game. Elevate with a 300 gold lead. Not too much, considering they got two really early kills immediately after most one responded with the soul lane and that's going to allow wolves with this one level advantage he should be able to finish off breastplate before Niquid, and that could give him a small power spike to really go for more plays around that speed and blue buff side so how come we haven't seen more invades coming out from naja on the duo side well, one gonna... second mccoy taking a lot of damage the pull from hugbug gonna be good the dash gonna be forced out and they're not gonna be able to lock him down but that could have been really good for elevate only using the ultimate out of keeks mate was a nice little attempt. They poked out the Athena, having to retreat. Now, does have ultimate, so this could allow Most Wanted now with some pressure in the mid lane. If, if Sinusure finds a stun ultimate, Athena can easily follow up. Yeah, but as mentioned earlier, why haven't we seen Sinusure rotate back towards those that duo side to help give Jingwei, or to help take out Jingwei? Just wants to make sure that he ping-pongs between the speed and the blue buff. You don't really want to concede too much pressure on that side. It seems that between these two hunters right now, Transonics and Zen, they're they're both very contempt about holding their own. There's not much kill potential on either one of them. You have a rewind from Transonics, and then you have the ultimate, which gives you a lot of space from Zen. Right, Harpy is going to go to Elevate here, just patiently farming it out. We mentioned patience earlier in the last set, but really good patience coming out from Elevate, especially considering they got so trounced earlier on. Most wanted. They're not able to do the same thing that they did last time around. Matt Coyce, he hasn't been forcing the purifications with his dash taunts. Now, it's also depending on the factor of Cloud. He's not that high level to get the confirmed damage off. The Stellar Burst has been maxed out, but he doesn't have that many items to really get off the damage quite yet. I mean, plus everybody's so slippery when it comes to Elevate. Keeg's able to backflip out of everything. Even Capri's got that dash to get out of dodge. And that's going to make it that much harder for Matt Coyce to really find the dash taunt. It's going to be important for Elevate to le keep leaning on this dash taunt and then taking advantage of the misposition Cloud from Athena. Oh, taking a lot of damage. Not going to be able to lock him down. But that's going to be a little bit less pressure coming out from Cloud at this point. Going to see a little bit of CC coming out from Transonics, but it's not going to hit anybody. And instead, Elevate going to take not only the right camps, but going to take the left ones too. And now on the right-hand side, we see Wolves just pushing it out. That He was able to bully out Nick with so hard that he's going to be able to get this tier 1 tower. If not now, then definitely very soon. It's going to be very close and clutch. We have we have Nickwood jumping in, trying to find it, trying to take out these minions and take a lot of extra damage to Wolves, but that is going to be the tower, but that is also going to be the forced ultimate coming out, forcing the ultimate out of Wolves to Mystic Rush out of there. And I will I wouldn't necessarily even like to see that ultimate out of Wolves. He does, didn't really need it there, but now without that jump, there's nowhere for this Odin to go. Nikwit in the sky, getting land back down. Boom! There it goes, right back into the ground, and Wolves going to take him out before Nikwit can do anything about it. And this is how most want to get back into the game, relying onto Wolves. The pressure that he's applying onto Odin right now is just too much. Already getting the tower, second death onto Nikwit, allowing Wolves more flexibility to now start rotating. He can be applying pressure on the back harpy speed and blue i mean now that we have that out i want to see a lot more rotations because there's a lot of ground that most wanted are going to have to cover they have a little bit of a taste they have a little bit of taste of victory currently they need to keep that momentum up we want to see the team that we saw last game 
Absolutely. And Jumpa, he hasn't been making the same plays. After being gifted that first blood, I know, right? he hasn't been really finding any more kills on top of this. The the roots from Keeks made just weren't on point. The one time they tried to find a kill onto Matt Coyce, he was so slippery. He found an escape path. So maybe look for some pressure in the dueling, like you were mentioning, Transonics, at least forcing out maybe a rewind and then look for a kill. We haven't seen as much of these big team fights coming out like Zen forced out with a little bit of that CC coming out from the Kronos. Going to miss that attack gonna be just fine there but back in the meet back in the mid lane cloud on the receiving end of the ultimate as soon as he came out of this apparate that's when jump up can come in with the execute ripping holes ultimate ulting himself they're gonna try to get him as low as possible and then as soon as that ultimate's gone they're gonna try and take him out ripping holes beautiful three-man route but the taunt gonna bring him right back in mystic rush is gonna be what sets him apart trading one for one rewind coming out but wolves finding keeks made in return so it's a two for one but now with Nikwit in the mix he's gonna be able to trap in Wolves, but there's no one else to really follow up off that damage. Nope, nobody to follow up, so instead just gonna leave them to sit there, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna risk the opportunity for him to be taken out. And that's gonna allow the rest of Most Wanted some more breathing room off of Jumpa. Finding a third kill was so important for him. He also applied a little bit of pressure onto Transonics. So we saw the rewind come out. He didn't have to use his purification. And now this is going to be a little scary for Elevate because even though there's an Al Kuang in the jungle, there's a Kronos on the opposite end of that with a fully stacked Doom Orb. So you have to be starting to look at this Kronos player. Is it a problem for Most Wanted that all of their kills are sitting on the back of Wolves? Not at all. Because with that two level advantage and the tier one tower gone, now you could start making some plays around Gold Fury, which will not only benefit Wolves, but everybody else for his team, making sure that Sinusure doesn't fall too far behind onto Jumpa and can still look for the plays. And look at this, three kills onto Jumpa, but he's two levels behind Sinusure. I mean, the farm game strong, doing their best to stay in the game. I want to see, yeah, we're going to see, uh, we're going to see Robin back. And then we're going to start, as you mentioned, seeing these rotations coming out from him. Got have a little bit of extra pressure and then maybe mo get most wanted back on the map. Elevate had a very strong early game. Going to get the taunt coming in. Get the sash as well. Ripping hole is going to be sent into the air with Sinosure, but he's very tanky. There's so much damage coming out. He ulted himself once again. And the supernova going to just completely split up that fight. Cloud taking a lot of poke from Keeks made force into the purification because of wolves he's still being aggressive he's even zoning out Nikwit still two levels ahead he's going to be chasing him down back into the solo lane and this is what we want to see out of most wanted still making plays off of Matt Coy's taunts it's just stay over there we're going to have this team fight in the mid that you're not going to be a part of beautiful root coming out Sinusure can't go anywhere at this point Keeks channeling channeling the ultimate but instead going to go ahead and back off they don't want to follow up just yet but I'd say that's a win for Wanted. Absolutely. Transonics making the rotation still. He was forced into the rewind earlier on. Stun not on the mark. Neither is the time ref. So this is what's something that Most Wanted really want to do. Start collapsing with your side lanes into middle. Looking to try to find the taunt once again. Wolves going to be able to get out of jail. Free kick. And Zen going to set a little bit of zoning with that gust. Take a little bit of damage. Wolves and Athena in the back line. But they're going to start rotating back towards this Gold Fury. They did a great job poking out a lot of members from Elevate. Look at Rip and Holes. He's at half health already. If he commits with a dash, he's going to be in trouble. Beautiful two-man taunt coming out. Rip and Holes immediately eradicated. Transonics doing so much damage. And now Keeg's going to fall to sign. I'm sure this is exactly what most wanted want. Great meditation and shell being popped. Most wanted still on Beautiful. the aggressive. Nick with forced to jump away. The ultimate is being used defensively, but it's not in time. Nick, he's going to fall. Zen going to be able to get a little bit of damage when it comes to these two members locked in the cage. But as soon as, they, as, soon as they're free, they disperse. Zen not really going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and that's going to be a free... Gold Fury. Definitely going to be free right now. Sinusure, Matt Coys, and Cloud have enough damage. Jumper having to retreat back to his back left Harpies. 13 minutes in, most wanted, securing themselves the Gold Fury. And any sort of deficit they had has been immediately responded back with all these grouping ups. You can see the graphs here show. It was a little bit in favor at Elevate, not too much. But then we're really starting to nosedive and dip towards most wanted. 13 minutes and 30 seconds in. With that five and a half thousand experience, they're just going to keep grouping up for these team fights. If you want to fight us for over these objective objective, whether it's right side mid harpies or not, you're going to have to fight more of us. And it's going to be up to elevate to really find a straggler. You have to allow jumper to find these executes. You have keys mates ultimate. You have also the Kepri to try to bail out jumper. But I haven't seen much coming out of the place after those first three kills. Where did elevate lose their control? They had this match 
in their hands so far. It was a nice slow burn, but where did they really lose it? It was when Liquid was getting ganked two times in the solo lane already. Keeks made taking a lot of poke, having a backflip, but yeah, after those two deaths onto Liquid, that's when Most Wanted starting to control the pace of the game. We saw Wolves rotating in middle. We saw how much zoning he was able to do with that two level lead he had earlier on. Trying to take this left mid Harpy, but instead going to go more than likely to the damage over time. Elevate having a little bit of a boon there, but Most Wanted could definitely make that up when they go back to do their own camps and, you know, take picks as they've been staying in these big cohesive groups. And that's what they need to do right there. Bait out the taunt and then continue on the pressure onto Matt Coy's ultimate not being used. And that's going to be a free execute. And now rotation from Wolves forcing out the purification. That was a neat ultimate to the face. And that was a purification coming out from Keegs as well. Jumpa able to get a nice tasty snack. Athena will be down for another 23 seconds. So that's a lot less pressure coming out from Most Wanted The Elevate want to take advantage of. Rippin' Holtz has to be careful. He didn't want to dash aggressively there because that would have been against a soul. And then Transonics rotating underneath the ultimate from Sinusher is slightly off the mark. And that should allow Elevate to turn the tide. They have a little bit of extra breathing room here. And the rewind has been forced out by Transonics, but it's going to be in a position where it's going to be okay. Blink through the wall. Bird Bomb coming in. Sinister taking quite a bit of damage. The root coming out. Jumpa going to get stuck there, but more wolves channeling that ultimate coming in with the Athena. They could look for another taunt. They're going to find Niquid, but he's at full health. They're definitely not the right target to go on, and the rest of Most Wanted, they're going to back off now. They have to be careful. A lot of ultimates were used. We saw Mad Coys being used. The rewind from Transonics is down, as well as Trans Sinister's ultimate being used. That was pretty much just a complete and total ult. Just, just use your ult and then we'll, we'll reconvene in a couple of minutes. They were relying on the respawn from Matt Coyce to kind of be a surprise factor in that little exchange, despite it being a four on five in favor of Elevate. Once the respawn happened from Matt Coyce, it would have been a five on five, but they did, they couldn't really take advantage of it. We had a little bit of tasty action, two man taunt coming in. Sinusher clearing out the minions though, instead not really focusing where it needs to be. Matt Coyce taking a lot of damage and already forced out immediately. He had no follow up. He was forced to use the meditation and I saw after he got executed, he was level 12 with only shell. I was thinking to myself, like, maybe he was going to pick up Purification to survive against the Al Kuang Execute. This would allow him to still be aggressive, look for the dash taunts, and survive against Jumpa's ultimate and positioning. A little bit of a pause coming out, though. Gives, his, gives the players a little bit of time to think. All right, so Most Wanted, we had that giant fight, and nobody really came out on top of it. They were able to take out Matt Coy's, but then there was no follow-up from either team. I would say that it's more about Wolves now going to be pressuring out Niquid in the solo lane while the Goal Fury is still down for a large period of time. Most Wanted, they've been making the plays with Matt Coyce, but the turnaround plays from Elevate, we saw how easy it was for him to get picked off with all the roots coming from the Capri in the Neath and the damage from Ao Kuang. I mean, even though the numbers don't show it at this point, four to seven, this is a much closer game than we saw earlier on. The graphs aren't nearly as dire as they were, even though things are still very heavily in favor of Most Wanted as they, you know, try to go and invade on this speed camp, but Elevate going to be able to take it just fine. Great smart four-man rotation at this point. Even though they are overextended on the right, Gold Fury still down on the left, so saving their own speed buff. Sinusher looking for a play a little bit off the mark with that Sash. Not going to be able to find anybody with it. Instead, Universe Ring Toss going to pull these minions back just a little bit, take the buff. Maybe more Wolves is here as well, but the Bird Bomb coming in wants to go ahead and try to take down Niquid if possible, and Jumpa just sitting at the sidelines waiting while Transonics ready to go ahead and bring some auto attack annihilation. Niquid's jump is down for a little bit longer. Nice little taunt from Matt Coy. Some pressure in mid lane, though. Sinusher oh. not on the mark with that ultimate, but still going to be able to force out the purification. Force out the purification, find the sash, and force out the sanctuary. Wolves is here, however, but he sees that ultimate being channeled. That is going to be a revived Neath. The cage is coming up, going to trap Wolves inside. The rest of the team is stuck outside, but the sash coming in through Nickwood, waiting for the Neath ultimate to come in, too. Sinister takes a little bit of a little bit of a dip, and that's going to be the execute. No purification allows a free kill for Jumper. He's going to get sustained back in, jumping onto Cloud, and now Nickwood jumping in and blowing Cloud up. Matt Coy's trying to find the right dash, but gets intercepted. That's going to be three deaths for Most Wanted. That's going to be the pull as well, but so much damage coming out from Transonics. This, they were all stuck there, and he was just bringing out the pain. But now Rippin' Holes trying to find the root, not going to be able to find it, and now Zen wants to bring as much pressure to this Tier 1 tower as possible. Wolves made the teleport in mid lane. He could potentially look for Rippin' Holes with the damage from Transonics, but the root was not on the mark, giving a little bit of breathing room from Most Wanted. They hold on to their Tier 1 mid. Gold Fury not even 
game being started by Elevate, so it's going to be important for Elevate to look for these little plays off of their wins in team fights. Checking out the graphs after that fight, Elevate were able to put a couple of things on the board, and you can see that dip. It's small, but it's a dip back towards Elevate. It's slowly bringing the game back up in their favor. Most wanted are not invulnerable. They always just want to be able to catch up experience more than gold at this point. If yep. they extended to the tier one, they could have potentially lost some more members. Kronos at this point with level 18, do more fully stacked up, does too much damage, and we saw how easy he was able to find that pick. Wolves putting the pressure onto the solo tier two tower. Not going to be able to take it out just yet, but lots of damage. That's going to be something they're going to have to worry about. Otherwise, it's going to fall and they're going to lose any pressure falling back if they want to try to take that go uh, take the fire giant. Matt Koi still looking for somebody with his dash taunt, especially with Sinister and Cloud right around the corner. It's going to be four, though, from Elevate, whereas Transonics has not made the rotation quite yet. Just now finishing off his Polynomicon. I feel like Odin have been doing pretty good, but checking out the level deficit, most wanted. Wolves has two levels on this Odin. What can Odin do to still stay relevant instead of being a one-trick pony with that ult? He just has to be careful about his engages. He needs to look for the blink ultimates and then save his jump just to be able to bait out the cooldowns and then jump away whenever he's in trouble. And that's very important for both teams. Matt Coyce has to worry about his engage, where on the flip side, Nikwit has to worry about his. Most Wanted and Elevate both grouping up to secure their own buffs, secure these mid camps, do what they can just to make sure that, I mean, it's a, it's a lot closer game than it was earlier now, so Most Wanted probably starting to feel that burn. Absolutely, but they're not worried, I would say, in the lake end because the fact that they have Soul, Kronos, Naja, that's going to be able to do so much damage. As long as they're able to be careful around the positioning from Jumpa, who's only level 15, by the way, they should be in a good spot. Sin taking a lot of damage, but a good blink coming out from the Jumpa. Athena being channeled as well as Sinister jumps into the fray. Good Sash forcing out the purification from the Al Kuang. And then here comes the ultimate. Transonic's going to find in my Zen and Keeg's going to be channeled by ripping holes for the ultimate. Good root coming out from the good, good root coming out from the Cug Bug as well. They're not able to find any more kills though. Rip and holes. He missed his ultimate. He tried to hit on Zen, but it was off the mark. Nice little purification by Keegs, but Sinistar, he's gonna find the ultimate. He's gonna pull Matt Coys as well, waiting for him to come on down to collapse in. Keegs forcing out that sanctuary. Jumpa taken out, but Clow finally able to find Keegs. But Kronos is now gone. That's a huge loss in Clow taking out Rip and Holes. This is definitely turned to most wanted's favor. They want to take out this tower before the teleport can happen, but instead, here comes Wolves. He's going to get taunted in. Tier 2 tower does fall. His jump is available. All the members are trapped in, so that's going to be a nice objective in most wanted's favor. Despite losing train Sonics, they find three kills. They find the Tier 2 tower. They're going to start up the Gold Fury, and it's going to be up to Jumpa and Nikwit to try to hold it, but it doesn't seem they want any part of that action. Now, Nikwit, Nikwit keeping his hands full with these creep as well as train Sonics and Jumpa on the complete other side. Now, is he going to be able to, like, is he in the position to try and split push, or is it better to try and find these team fights and take them out as a Fed Alkong? At this point, he has to be looking for more farm. He just now hit level 16. He needs to be looking for some more gold. He had the Polynomicon. He wanted to hit that tower with that proc, but with a teleport from Wolves at level 20, Robin, that has a good amount of sustain with the meditation. He has the wing blade to try to catch up to jump, but you don't want to be next to Wolves. Yep, going to be farming this mana camp as well. We had a little bit of a teleport coming out from uh, the Robin. But not going to be able to lock down the Alquang just yet. Stopping the tele or stopping the back, however, just to make sure that he backs up a little bit further. Wolves even here turn in the corner just to make sure that they're not going to be able to lock him down. But still, stopping the back once again. Wolves being a complete and total pain in the butt. He wants to continue the pressure on this tier 2 tower with the right hand side. It's at less than half health. This also allows Most Wanted to group up around the middle lane if they wanted to, to get that tier 1 of their own. Back into that solo slap fight, keeping Nickwood busy. That's the point. I mean, Wolves can join this fight and do as much as he wants in this team fight back in the middle. It's about to happen here, but they don't want that Odin cage. You don't want that Odin bird bomb. They want to be able to still be aggressive in these team fights. They're finding the taunt onto Rippin' Holes, the Stellar Burst, and the stun coming out, having to retreat his Rippin' Holes. And now this is going to be more pressure coming out of most one. Rippin' Holes cannot stay. Yeah, they can't stay, but they blew so many cooldowns on it. Nickwood going to get sashed by Sinister and then pinched by Wolves, forcing out the ultimate and the bird bomb, but he's going to get sent into the air by Sinister coming back down. Lots of damage, but Nickwood's still alive. And Rippin' Holes still lingering around. He wants to get off the ultimate just in case. A nice bird bomb over the wall, finding Cloud Zen credited with the kill. 
Clout going to be able, not going to be able to be in this fight for a little while longer, but Nickwood looking very low, probably the next target most wanted, putting on as much pressure as possible. Kills 9 to 11. Rip and Hull is going to get stunned out, and now Zen very low. Keegs forced out as well. Transonics is never afraid to lead in the front line despite himself being that hunter. Still diving is on to Zen. A nice triple taunt for Koi's, setting up the rest of his team. Wolves don't care. He's jumping in, bringing out as much damage as he can from the depths of that tower, forcing Holes to ult himself. And I mean, there's not much he can do. He's forced back out and most wanted have another free tower that they've earned by throwing their weight around. All they have to do is just poke out Elevate, find the objectives. That's exactly what they're doing. They're finding the tier two mid, and with gold fury being down, the next objective should be this tier two on the right hand side once they all spend their gold in hand. I mean, at that point, Creep might be able to finish that off if we don't have any interference coming on. But it looks like Odin's going to head over there, try to bring that back up. But that's why Wolves is always heading back to that solo side, pushing up his Creep. Pushing up his creep, coming back into team fight. Push up creep, take out jungle, go to team fight. It's a nice rotation that works for him. And Elevate can't really keep up with it. Transonics, though, he doesn't have rewind. He's forced into the double relics. A great little play, though. He's still holding on to his tier one tower in middle. But training those relics could give Elevate a potential opportunity for Jumpa to find the execute. Yeah, he straight up popped those at the same time. 3, 1, and 4. He didn't want to lose any momentum or those stacks coming onto his Doom Orb. So smart play, but it's going to make him a gigantic target. As long as now he's going to have to change his style. We saw how aggressive he was during that Tier 2 Tower Siege. He was the one leading the charge. He wasn't afraid. He had his rewind available. He trusted his teammates to bail him out. But now without these relics, now he's going to be relying on Wolf, Sinistar, and Matt Coys to lead the fray while Transonics stays in the back line. A little more passive, but... Athena ultimate being channeled, crashing on in. Bird Bomb not doing as much damage as Nickwood would have hoped, keeping those two caged in for now. But at this point, ripping holes, taking a little bit of pain. Wolves just still doing a good job zoning Zen and holes at the same time. Cloud finding a little bit of poke onto Zen, and now he's the one that's being aggressive with Matt Coys, trying to make sure that he's in position to taunt anybody that sticks on him. Now Elevate, they're trying to amass a defense. What can they do right now? Most Wanted are kind of splitting up taking all their options of escape out. They're trying to find anybody out of position. Right now it's Sinusure, but the route was off the mark. They could have maybe forced out a purification off of that, but a nice double taunt onto Jumpa and Zen. Wolves still going to be aggressive, looking for more poke. Get knocked up, and Koi's going to be chased out. Lots of damage coming out from Jumpa, Nickwood, and Zen together, but Wolves going to be able to withstand the fires as he comes in, forcing the Jing Wei out. Lots of damage being pumped out. The slow going to be good coming out from the Odin as well. Transonics trying to poke out Nickwood, but can't find the hits. Zen going to get bullied out by Wolves. Wolves, and now on the flip side, Sinusure is wrapping around underneath. Waiting to come in the back line to try and take somebody out of the fight for just a couple of seconds, but Mr. Grush jumping in, Wolves looking for ripping holes. Going to be a beautiful stun, and now Zen being for, being channeled by this ultimate, but as soon as that goes away, he might be he might be taking out Clow, taking out ripping holes, so even if that hadn't been gone, there goes the revive. Sinusure had to use his ultimate defensively, a nice clean pick yet again onto ripping holes. Most wanted, still leading the charge with Wolves in the front line. Transonics trying to find more kills. Tier 2 tower does fall on right. And now this should be a free fire giant unless they can find a pick and go for a Phoenix. Where was this most wanted in the first couple of minutes of this game? It looked like a completely different team. And it's like, okay, we're going to wake up now and play the game. This is the, this is what we were mentioning before about the late game Kronos, the late game Soul. Their damage has now come online. We see almost a fully finished build coming out of Transonics. Working on that Rod of Tehuti, he should be able to get it after this Gold Fury. Gold Fury rotation is going to be good. Just finding these two split groups, going to meet in the middle, take the Gold Fury. I mean, we see Elevate rotating over towards his right side, maybe putting down some wards for this Fire Giant. That's going to be the next big point of contention. I don't think, since we saw last game, most Wanted didn't take it in one fell swoop. It was cut after cut after cut. And that's what they're going to try to do this time around is find the picks that they really need to. But Jumpa, he's forced to water illusion. Now he got spotted out by Matt Coys, and he has to be careful. He's forced to use the blink on the right-hand side, but they're not done chasing him. Athena dashing in, looking for it. Meanwhile, on the other side, Keeg's in a pretty bad spot. Transonics just needs one more hit. Not going to find it. Finally taking out Keeg's mate. That's one less to worry about as the other side 
has the, has the action coming out. Zen forced to dash away. And then, looking up, here comes Naja bringing him into the air. Zen taking a lot of damage, crashing down. He's only one hit away and forcing out the ultimate. And now it's going to be up to Nikwa to try to bail him out of trouble, as well as ripping holes. We saw Jumpa having to retreat earlier on. And with mm. that jump from Odin, he's going to get dash taunted here. Nowhere for him to go. Nikwa can't find the jump yet. He doesn't have it. And instead, he's going to get channeled by the Kepri ultimate. They're going to wait for him to try and come back. Now that he's got the jump, he's going to jump over the wall but wolves is here to try and go ahead and close the distance but instead decides doesn't want to over aggress too much and it seems that cloud's in a lot of trouble jumper has made the rotation zen with his passive but now dash taunt from koi's onto zen cloud still has to worry jump is there transonics takes out zen jump in the back line it's gonna get caught out by the chronos that's gonna be a uh, bye-bye invisibility there they're gonna try and turn on him sinusure the dash coming out from athena he's gonna get eradicated sinusure getting credit for that kill and now now they're going to start looking at the Fire Giant. With those two kills onto Zen, onto Jumpa, that eliminates a lot of damage on the side of Elevate. This gives more flexibility for Most Wanted to freely get this Fire Giant without any Phoenixes down yet either. This is where the end game starts for Most Wanted. It was a little bit of a slow burn to get to this point for Most Wanted, but now we're, gonna, now we're seeing the same team coming out from the last game. Elevate had their momentum, and they lost it on the back of those kills that you'd mentioned. I mean, I always ask the question, what can Elevate do? At this point, they have to hope for a miracle. They're down about 13,000 gold, five members with Fire Giant on the side of Most Wanted, late game Kronos, late game Soul. You're praying for a miracle. You're hoping that the initiation from Sinashore misses the Sash, misses the ultimate. You take advantage of Matt Coy's with a dash taunt, and you put all your damage onto him, allowing Jumper for an easy execute. Surprised the damage coming out from Al Kwong is as low as it is. I mean, usually we see him on the top of the top of these team fights coming up, bringing out that burst damage. But he's been uh, he's been pretty quiet, all things considered. He hasn't been able to find the right targets in these mid to late game ex skirmishes. He found the Athena a couple times earlier on in mid lane. With the executes. With the executes. But after that point in time, there's just so much pressure from Wolves. He's zoned, every time he's in a team fight, Wolves, he zones two or more members. Xing Wei is really the only one that hasn't suffered when it comes to these matchups and team fights, almost toe to toe when it comes to Kronos with player damage. But man, Transonics going ham. And that's what he's known to do. He's been playing so aggressive with Hu Yi in the SCL Summerland, where I think he went 9-0 in something in that little game. And doing the same thing with Kronos. He's in that position, which allows him to. He's a level 20 Kronos. Like a little bit of damage coming out. Jumpa in a pretty bad spot. Boxing with Wolves currently. I'm just watching his HP fall on by the wayside. But now back in the mid Phoenix. The fight still continues. They're splitting them up. And Sinusher going to find King's mate with the universe ring toss. Now finding the mid Phoenix is most wanted. And elevate. They just have to be spectators at this point in time. Not able to defend it. Left side Phoenix so needs to be defended if they want to hold on to their Titan. There it goes. Nick would taking a lot of damage. Forced to Bourbon out instead. And the Bourbon. Bird, the Phoenix bird is gone. That's two Phoenixes down, one remaining, and Most Wanted have a lot of pressure coming in on this Titan. Matt Coy is doing a good job zoning Elevate away while the rest of his team is positioning themselves for the last remaining Phoenix. Niquid blinking in, but he has nowhere else to go. Phoenix is already gone, and now Transonics dishing out the pain, finds I'm Zen. Lots of damage in my Zen, completely just erased from the map. And now Transonics going to come around the back end, looking for the kill, looking for the damage, the bird bomb going to come through from the Odin in the cage, but he's locked the Titan in there with them. He's going to be able to still do off the damage, even despite getting pulled out. The rest of Most Wanted, they're going to go for the Titan. It is so low, and that's going to be the second win for them. They're going to get three points in this set. Jumpa going to find Cloud. Rippin' Hole's going to find Koi's. But at the end of the day, it's that Titan that matters. Whoever hits the ground first, that's a loser. I love the play from Most Wanted. Despite getting first blooded, they didn't care. Not at all. Jumpa getting those first two kills, they still played their game. They were relying on Wolves to carry them through the early game. Well, like you mentioned, that's going to be three points for Most Wanted. Now tied with Aware from that last set, but, I mean, we still got another game to go. We still got another set, at least, so we can't we can't necessarily say they're tied for first yet because we still got to see some games. That's true. Aware is also at sitting at six points, and going back into that last set, we saw Matt Coy on the Athena, both games specifically, how he was able to set up the Zeus on Cloud the first game, and then even the Soul the second game. Once the levels happened, that's where Most Wanted really shined with the Soul. The taunts were so tight. Pull him back, jump up. Pull him back anybody at this point, especially these really slippery targets. Coy's just threw his weight around. Beautiful two-man 
Manton coming in here into the rest of the CC from his team. That's so important. If you can find that Kronos time stop after the taunt, Most Wanted had a beautiful draft, I would say, that second game. I mean, the, the, the time stop, whatever, it doesn't matter who you were really drafting in. There was always an answer. He was al he always, most of the time, had somebody there with him to follow up. It wasn't just, okay, I'm going to taunt you, and then deuces. Bye. Adios. And, and that's what makes Most Wanted so scary. It's like you can never predict what they're really going to do with their draft, whether or not they're going to pick up this Athena onto Matt Coy's, or if they're going to go for the Guan Yu, which is why we see these bands coming out of Elevate with the Guan Yu. And there's always an immediate response from Most Wanted. That's what you want to have out of a 10-year team, to have these options in your back pocket. So do you have any final thoughts about Most Wanted coming in? Because we didn't really get to see them to their full potential last time, but... It really showed up today. Well, like I mentioned before, after losing to Aware Gaming, they seem like a totally determined and dedicated team. They don't want to have any more upsets. We saw the tweet from Transonics in that first week that was kind of memed afterwards at that point in time. But they've been playing solid against Eager, and now they've been playing very solid against Elevate. You know when Coop joins the meme that, you know, it's, it's real at it's that point. It's getting serious. It's getting serious business. But... More business coming up in a second. We have the fourth set coming at you. Aware versus Elevate. Stay tuned. We have more SCL action to come. Be better off. 